Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this video, I'm going to give a little bit of introduction related to gamma distribution. And this is a two-parameter family of continuous probability distributions. Example, uh, the arrival of times in Poisson process has a gamma distribution. Now, before we study the gamma distribution itself, it is important that we first introduce the gamma function uh, denoted or sim denoted by this symbol so here we've got gamma and it is defined as follows so this is the gamma function uh, and whenever you see this uh, it has something to do with integration where you're going to integrate this whole thing here uh, from zero to infinity and you can see that the value of alpha here takes any value as long as it is between zero and infinity okay so that's uh, what is gamma function and uh, here are the four essential properties of gamma function for example you have gamma function and here we've got one the result is equal to one and so on when you have alpha plus one this is equal to alpha uh, this one here is a gamma function we have alpha inside here and so on so these are all the important properties and in this video we are going to try and 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 look at all these properties uh, okay right um, let's start with proving the first property that gamma 1 is equal to 1 okay so that's what we're going to do now okay um, so again, whenever you want to, 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 to prove anything, we are going to start with the definition itself. So the definition we have is, this is the gamma function, the definition of that. You're going to integrate from 0 to infinity. You have x alpha minus 1. This is uh, e negative x dx. So this is um, the definition. Therefore, uh, if you have 1, so you're going to just replace 1 here at this space where alpha is. So it will be replaced right here and right there. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Mm. So it becomes 0 to infinity x1 one minus 1 e negative x dx. And that becomes x0 e negative x dx x0 is just 1 so we have e negative x dx and we know what's the result of this function when we integrate that it becomes e negative x negative 1 right and here is the limit infinity and 0 and um, this is the same thing as writing down negative 1 over e x some for some reason i just like to write it in this form and uh, we know that if you substitute infinity into x this part here is going to get very large so 1 over a very big number a very large number the result here is going to be negative 0 now when you substitute 0 into x e to the power of 0 is 1 um, and then here we have the result here is going to be negative 1 okay so mm, negative 0 minus um, negative 1 so final result is going to be equal to, to 1 okay so uh, that is quite simple really okay next uh, we're going to move on to the next question. We're going to prove that uh, this here, gamma function for alpha plus 1, is equal to this uh, left hand, right hand side here. And for this one, you need to apply the integration by parts where you can take u equals to x and alpha, x to the alpha, and dv is e negative x dx, okay? So that's the hint given. Okay, uh, again, 
we know that um, this is the basic definition which is 0 infinity x alpha minus 1 so here is the basic definition that you should not forget definition of gamma function mm. therefore uh, what we're going to apply is we need to find what is we're starting from the left hand side what is gamma alpha plus 1 so therefore we're going to just replace alpha plus 1 at this position here so alpha plus 1 will be at this position so it will be replaced right here okay well we have 0 infinity x so instead of alpha we're going to write down the whole thing here which is alpha plus 1 minus 1 e negative x dx and so the result that we get here is just x alpha e negative x dx okay so um this is the hint where you're going to let u equals x to the power alpha here and then db is e negative x dx yeah i'm just going to call this one so now we're going to let let u becomes x alpha therefore du dx is going to be equal to alpha x alpha minus one so you differentiate this one with respect to x so this is the result that you will get yes mm, and then we're going to let dv becomes e negative x dx therefore if you integrate dv this this part also has to be integrated and the result here is going to be v is equal to uh, if you integrate e negative x it's going to be e negative x negative 1 so that's the result okay and we're going to use this result and apply uh, the formula which is vu minus vdu so i'm sure um, you're familiar with this this is uh, something um, you learned in calculus 1 okay so next that's what we're going to do we're going to apply that one here okay we're going to apply this so therefore uh, one becomes okay so we're going to apply that and we have gamma alpha plus one is equal to what is v v is this guy uh, negative e negative x u is x alpha so that is uh, v and u and the limit is infinity and zero for this for this guy minus integrate v is negative e negative x and what is du du must be this guy with dx okay so du is alpha x alpha minus 1 dx yes okay that can be simplified as well if you uh, you want you can write this in terms of x alpha dx this is another way of writing it the limit is from infinity and zero minus minus becomes positive and then we have um, alpha x alpha minus one e negative x dx i'm just rearranging the position oh sorry this is the limit i forgot to write down okay so there you go you have managed to, to um sort of simplify that a little bit now if you substitute infinity into x and infinity into x at this spot here this number here we get to a very large number pretty fast compared to the one above here so when you divide something with such a large number the result here is going to be zero close to zero so it will be negative zero on the other hand if you substitute zero into x this part here becomes zero 
the bottom part here becomes 1. E0 is 1. So 0 divided with 1 is going to be 0. So negative positive 0. So that's it. Okay. Well, next is we can see that um, alpha is a constant and uh, it doesn't depend on this whole thing. It doesn't depend on x. So we can take it out. So alpha can be taken out from the process. So plus alpha, infinity and 0, x alpha minus 1, e negative x dx. And so we can write down... Now, I hope you can see that this part here is the same thing as this one given by the definition of gamma function. So, therefore, uh, our final result is uh, this one is equal to alpha times gamma function alpha, yeah? So, that's it. You are able to prove that uh, the result for this one is alpha gamma alpha okay okay now let's move on to the next one using the results in example 6.6 .6, which means this result here that we've got this one we're going to use this result uh, determine this value this value and this value and finally derive the result for this guy here so this is this is something related to property 3 of gamma function. Okay, so far what we've done is we have done this property, this one, and now we're going to look at the third one. We're going to try and get the result here or to see how the result comes about, okay? Mm. Right, uh, we're going to start off with gamma alpha plus 2. Now, gamma alpha plus 2. What is gamma alpha plus 2? But first of all, let's just you re rewrite what's the result in example 6.6. .6. The result is this one. This is the result that we're going to use. Uh, which is gamma alpha plus 1 is equal to alpha gamma alpha. Yeah, So that's the result. Okay. Now... We are going to start looking at this part first. So gamma alpha plus 2 is the same thing if I write in terms of gamma alpha plus 1 plus 1. Because the result here is alpha plus 2, right? Which is the same thing as this one. Um, notice that I'm writing it in terms of uh similar form like what we have here we have alpha plus one and right here i have something plus one and uh, similar to the idea that we have seen before if this is alpha plus one uh, i can just substitute alpha plus one at this position at alpha and at this position so i'm just going to substitute all alpha plus one at alpha position so I can use this formula straight away, yeah? So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use this formula. And I'm just going to substitute alpha here with alpha plus 1. Okay? Do you know what I'm doing? Um, well, well, this is the formula. Okay, so let, let me just try and uh, rephrase my statement, okay? So this is the formula, this in the box here is a formula that we need to use. Now let me just ask you, what is gamma y plus 1? So gamma y plus 1, if, if you apply this formula, we know that it should be y gamma y, right? Because you're just substituting uh, alpha with y. I hope you can see that. Now, what we have is alpha plus 1 plus 1. Here we've got alpha and plus 1. So, therefore, alpha plus 1 can be substituted into this alpha position, which is at this one, at this position and at this position. 
Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Here we have, um, therefore it becomes alpha plus 1, gamma alpha plus 1. Okay. Mm. Now, what else that we can do? Okay, uh, let me just erase this, this part, okay. Now, what is gamma alpha plus 1? Now, gamma alpha plus 1, this guy here, we can just uh, use the answer or the result here in a direct manner. So, we can substitute this into this. So, therefore, we have this one equals to alpha plus 1 times with alpha gamma alpha. And if you want, you can rearrange it so it looks a bit nice uh, or sort of in order. So we have start, we, we're going to start from alpha times alpha plus 1 times gamma alpha. So um, that's it. That's the result for gamma alpha plus 2. Let us try again. Okay, hopefully this time around you get more comfortable with this process. Now let's do uh, or let's try to solve gamma alpha plus 3 now gamma alpha plus 3 can be written in terms of gamma alpha plus 2 plus 1 so notice that i'm keeping the, the, the plus 1 so that it looks similar to this plus 1 and here we have something uh, this one is alpha but this is something else where you can just substitute this into the position of alpha okay similar to what i told you just now what if i tell you uh, find gamma x plus one what is this so of course if you see the pattern given here in the box if gamma alpha plus one is equal to al alpha gamma alpha therefore gamma x plus one must be equal to x gamma x it is as simple as that right so the same idea really here we've got alpha plus 2 and we're just going to substitute the whole thing here at this position okay now what we have is we have alpha plus 2 gamma alpha plus 2 that's what we have now what is alpha, what is this uh, term here this term here has already uh, been obtained at this part so so this one here is gamma alpha plus 2. We're just going to use the result. I'm going to write down, down the result. This is alpha, alpha plus 1, gamma alpha. And uh, we can make it nice by putting everything into order. So we can start with alpha times with alpha plus 1 times with alpha plus 2, gamma alpha. So that's it. Okay, so now we are going to look at the third one, which is um, gamma alpha plus 4. Okay, so gamma alpha plus 4 is the same thing as having gamma alpha plus 3 plus 1. So uh, we can see that it has similar look. We have something plus 1. So here we've got alpha plus 1. So therefore, this, this term here, we can just substitute right at this position, at this alpha position, okay? So the result here is going to be um, alpha plus 3, gamma alpha plus 3. And we have already obtained the result for gamma alpha plus 3, which is given by this one right here. And we're just going to use it. So we have alpha plus 3 times with alpha, times with alpha plus 1, times with alpha plus 2, gamma alpha. And we can rearrange it so that it looks nice in terms of its ordering. So we have alpha, alpha plus 1, times with alpha plus 2, times with alpha plus 3, times with gamma alpha. Therefore, based on this uh, result here, I hope you can see the pattern. For example, if we have alpha plus 2, 
uh, we're going to start from alpha and we're going to stop at 1. When you have 2, you stop at 1. And here when you have alpha plus 3, you're going to begin from alpha, alpha plus 1 and you're going to stop at alpha plus 2. When you have alpha plus 4, so you start from alpha, this one is plus 1, plus 2 and you stop at plus 3. Therefore, I'm sure you can come up with the formula for gamma alpha plus n. So it's going to have the same pattern, which is going to be equal to alpha times with alpha plus 1 times with alpha plus 2. It's going on and it will stop at alpha plus n minus 1 because the value is less than n. You see, this is 2. So the value here is 1, less than, than 2, less by one number. This is 3 and this is up to 2. This is 4, this is 3. So therefore, if this is n, now we got to, to, to minus that with one number. So we stop at that and we get here gamma alpha. And you will see that this result here is uh, what's, what is given in the third property, this one. So we, we, we are doing that, this one really, okay? Right, now let's look at the last example, which is related to property number four. Find what is gamma four by using property four, okay? So what is property four? Property four states that if you have gamma alpha, this is equal to alpha minus one factorial. If you are going to use property 4, so based on property 4, um, gamma 4 is equal to 4 minus 1 factorial and this is equal to 3 factorial, sorry, 3 factorial and this is just 3 times 2 times 1, which is going to be equal to 6. Okay, now next try and find the answer using property 2 okay so if you want to use property 2 well what is property 2 property 2 states that um, gamma alpha plus 1 is equal to alpha gamma alpha right so here is alpha gamma alpha let us see that once again let's check it once again yes this one okay Okay, so now let us do that. So by using property 2, uh, we can start with having gamma 4. This is the same thing as writing down gamma 3 plus 1, right? Uh, we were trying to have a similar look as this one something plus one so here we have something plus one three plus one and based on that we can just um, substitute three at this position so we can substitute three at alpha position three oops sorry oh god and three here at this position so what we have next is um three times gamma 3 okay next uh, I can just play along with what is gamma 3 so gamma 3 is equal to gamma 2 plus 1 right 3 is equal to 2 plus 1 therefore again I can just substitute 2 at this position at this position okay so I'm just using this fact right here so we have 3 times 2 times gamma 2. Huh? Now, what is gamma 2? Gamma 2 is just um, 1 plus 1. Okay. And again, I'm just going to substitute 1 at this alpha position. So we have 3 times 2 times 1 gamma 1. And... Uh, what is gamma 1? Gamma 1 is just 3 times 2 times 1 times 1. 
and this is the same thing as really 3 times 2 times 1 which is uh, 3 factorial and 3 factorial is the same thing as having 4 minus 1 factorial so uh, so you end up getting the same result as what is shown right here so 3 factorial is just equal to, to 6 okay Okay, I think uh, that's enough playing with the idea of a gamma function and I hope you are comfortable now with that idea and we're going to see more of it in, in, in the next video when we talk about gamma distribution itself. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching.